Welcome back legends. I'm here today with our nutritionist Dylan Mackey and today we're going to talk about eating and drinking pre and post training. Now we get a lot of questions about people for um, what they should be doing on game days but something that's really important as well is making sure that you're fueling yourself as well as you can for your training sessions and as, as a cricketer you might be at training for up to three hours let's say and it might be straight after school or straight after work and if you haven't got your diet right you haven't got your hydration right, you're not going to be at your optimal level, you're not probably going to train as well as you can, which over time means you're not going to improve as much as you can. So getting your diet right and getting your hydration right on training days is really, really important. So Dylan, what are some things our, our members, our athletes can be thinking about or looking for or focusing on on training days? Yeah, sure. So we've spoken a bit about already the, uh, the importance of pr the pre-game nutrition, I guess, and those kind of principles will carry, will carry over to your training. So uh, pre-training, you still want to be aiming for a high carbohydrate, uh, low fat, low fiber, um, maybe low to moderate protein, but still it's in the... Um, Yeah. In contrast to the rest of the day, your protein intake is quite low at this time. Um, so you want to be getting that fuel that's there. And again, you want to be hydrating, you want to have that, uh, that fluid there and make sure that you're carrying that out throughout the day and also through training. Um, we'll speak about this later, but that's the very important uh, point to cover that you practice what you're going to do on game day during training and uh, even more so with your fluid because you really need to have that um, that plan there to make sure that you gain the fuel that you need. In regards to your post-workout or um, post-training um, recovery, I like to think of recovery um, from exercise sports as your three R's. So you've got your replenishment, um, which refers to your replenishment of muscle glycogen. So that's essentially your fuel. You want to make sure um, that you're getting the fuel back in there so that you can go again for the next day where you've got a game. Um, the next day you might be training uh, later that day. So there are your things like your carbohydrates. You want to get your carbs in there so that you can replenish the fuel that you've just burned um, to make sure that you can uh, go again when you need to. The second R refers to repair, uh, repair and synthesis of protein. So this refers to your protein intake. Uh, you want to make sure that you're consuming a high quality source of protein pretty much as soon as you can uh, after training. Uh, this is going to help with building new proteins, repairing the ones that you've broken down or oxidized um, and repairing those so that you can uh, continue to turn over protein. And would that be a protein shake? It could be, yes. Uh, bag of jerky or? Yeah, so I guess some protein sources, what that would look like. Uh, milk is a fantastic choice. I always say milk because it's cheap, you know, it's accessible, it's convenient. Um, everyone can generally get their hands on it, even flavoured milk. You can get the little 300 ml cartons or uh, the bigger 600 ml cartons of flavoured milk. I think they're fantastic. They've got uh, uh, Does it matter if they're high in sugar or do you want to try and avoid the sugar in, um, content or? doesn't matter so much. Personally, I don't really think it matters that much after training. Um, in the, the goal that we're trying to achieve here is to replenish our stores of uh, glycogen and we want to repair that muscle. Um, and those drinks really enable us to do that. And you throw on, the, on top of that, they're cheap, they're accessible, they're convenient. Um, they have some electrolytes in them. I think they're personally a really great choice. Um, if milk isn't your thing, eggs, meat, um, poultry, chicken, fish, uh, things of that nature are all really good choices as well if you're cooking at home or doing something like that. Uh, up and goes, uh, there's little convenience yogurts that you can get, Chobani, Yopro, they're really on top of those kind of things uh, right now. So yeah, making sure that you gain the protein intake in there is the second R. And then the third R is your rehydration, so your fluid intake again, guys. So making sure that you're practicing what you're going to be doing on game day uh, while you're training. Um, so this refers to, I guess, the, the volume of water that you want to be taking on. So making sure you're actually getting in an adequate volume of water. And also 
that you're practicing uh, the intervals at which you're going to be taking it at. So you're not just having, you know, smashing a layer at the start and a, a leader at the end. Ideally, you want to be fairly consistent in getting those intervals in. Um, it's actually going to help with the em emptying of your stomach and getting that fluid uh, to where it needs to go. So, yeah, making sure that you're having your fluid intake throughout training is really important as well. Um, so, yeah, your three R's, you've got your replenishment, which refers to your carbohydrate, getting your carbs in there um, to get the fuel back into your body. Um, recovery, so your protein intake, and uh, rehydration. rehydration, yeah, uh, making sure you're getting your fluid intake as well. And just um, a few ideas maybe for mm. snacks pre-training, someone's yep. just finished school yep. and they're heading to training, or someone's just finished work, they're heading to training, what sort of things, yep. maybe they can stop at a service station, or maybe they can prepare something that the morning before, like morning yep. of, yep. what sort of little snacks or meals, Not obviously not a big meal, because mm -hmm. they're going to be training, yep. what sort of little things can our athletes be looking to consume? Uh, one thing I always reach for, and will continue to reach for, is up and goes, um, I really rate them, um, the, I know they've got the smaller size, they've got larger size, there's the Energize um, spin-off which has a higher protein intake. Uh, Sanitarium also does a four or 500 mil uh, drink, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it has a slightly higher protein intake than the Up and Goes, which is fantastic. Um, like I mentioned, the little convenience pouches of yogurts are great. Um, I think Chapani does one with the oats as well. So, you, I mean, you've got the dairy, which already has some carbohydrate in there, uh, carbohydrate in there, but if you get the oats in there as well, that's a really good choice. Um, bananas. Bananas, yes, of course, your fruits, um, apples, bananas, anything quick and easy to go like that. Um, your muesli bars, really convenient and easy. I regularly go for like the oven baked like um, yogurt muesli bars I guess, the, the kind of thicker ones that you can get from a lot of servos yeah. uh, by Go Natural and those kind of guys, they're a great choice. Um, you know, they, they definitely provide a lot of energy um, in a slow sort of release manner um, yeah, awesome. that can be utilised for training. Yeah, definitely on the go as well. Awesome. And now guys, um, it's about you working out what works with your body and your stomach as well. For me, Generally, if I'm running, I don't have to. I don't um, like to, to have a lot of milky products in my stomach, so I'd look something a bit drier, something a bit more fruity, or a muesli bar. So yep. you've got to work out what works for you as well. So, guys, there's a little insight on what you should be doing pre and post training um, on, on on training day. So, cheers, deal. Cheers, guys.